this video, I will be giving you a demonstration of how to define motion of a piston in particle works in order to run a piston cooling simulation. With no mesh to generate and using particle works' easy to use model build wizard, the most complicated step of the simulation process is often defining the motion for the simulation. For this reason, here at EngineSoft UK, we have developed a parameterized script which can be used to define the motion for your piston based off only a handful of user inputs. In this way, the motion can be quickly and easily prescribed to each component and different operating conditions can be simulated by changing just one value in the common script. Here, I have simply read in my geometry files, I have a separate file for each component which moves. The first step of defining any motion is to first define the centers of each moving component, so particle works can rotate that component about the correct point. In this case, the center of the crankshaft is minus 55.06, 220.63, and just checking along the z-axis. And this is the crankshaft axis. The centre of the conrod is minus 45.62, 197.48, And this is the centre of the big end. And then finally, the piston is minus 55.06, 317.11, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. And this is the centre of the pin. To find the centres in this way creates a triangle between these three components, making the calculations for the motion very simple. In this case, there is no offset of the piston as it is directly above the centre of the crankshaft. This script, however, does work for pistons with a horizontal offset as well. We also have a script which works for engines with pistons travelling in multiple directions, such as V engines, W engines and Boxer engines. I'm now going to open my script in Notepad++ so I can have both open at the same time. This is a JavaScript function. The user only needs to edit the parameters in this section. All calculations are done in below, but these will never need changing as the script will work for all inline piston designs. So let's start off by defining the centers of the components in the same way as we've just done in particle works. Now, as the motion is only happening in two directions, we only need to define the centers in the horizontal and vertical directions in that order. Now in my case, the horizontal direction is the x direction and vertical is in the y direction. However, if your design is in a different orientation, then you just need to take the components for the horizontal and vertical in your orientation as necessary. So let's go ahead and enter those for all of my components. The piston and the rod sensors are element zero of a matrix of sensors. The reason for this is that we, so that we can define the motion for additional piston, pistons if necessary. To do this, we simply copy these lines and increase these values by one and adjust the coordinates as necessary. We are simulating only one piston so we can remove these extra additional lines. The next parameter we need to adjust is the input RPM. Quite simply, this is the RPM of the crankshaft. And finally, we have the ramp length, which is the length of time ramping from zero RPM to the maximum RPM that we have just defined. Now, in this case, I'm just going to set zero, so we're instantaneously at max RPM. Now that we have defined all of the parameters specific for this case, I can go ahead and copy all of this into particle works. Particle Works has two levels of scripting, the common script and the component script. This main block of code will be stored in the common script and then we can call individual functions on the component level. To access the common script, you need to go to Animation, Edit Scene Common Script. If I paste all my code into here, you will see a little message in the right hand side saying OK, meaning that Particle Works is happy with the code that I've just entered. The code I need to call for each component is then listed down here in the common script. So let's start off with the crank rotation. If I select my crankshaft, go to keyframes, rotation, 
By clicking this scroll, I can activate the component scripting. I first need to change the type to RPM and then set my axis of rotation to be the Z axis. To then call the crank rotation function, I need to first type in function get value with a capital V, open bracket T close bracket, and this just populates the current time within the simulation. I then need to open my curly brackets and type return the function that I just copied with one argument of the time that I've just got use the get value function, a semicolon, and then close my curly brackets. Particle works again as shows that it is okay with this. And by clicking play, I can preview that motion. If I want to slow down the animation, I can change the preview interval by clicking this button and setting a higher frequency. Being able to preview the motion before launching the simulation is a useful tool to ensure that we have defined motion correctly before we launch an invalid simulation. Next, let's define the motion on the con rod, and I can use the code that I've just written to save time. If I select my con rod, again change my type to RPM and select my scroll, pasting in this code and all I have to do is change crank to rod and add a second argument to tell particle works which rod we are currently looking at. These need to be in the same order as they are in the common script if we had additional rods and pistons. In this case I only have the one rod so I put one here. Again, change my axis of rotation. In a similar manner, we can define the horizontal and vertical motion on the con rod. Again, by clicking the scroll, changing rotation in this case to horizontal. And finally, in the vertical direction, changing horizontal to vertical. final step is now to set the motion on the piston, again using a similar function. In this way, we have easily defined all the motion in only a matter of minutes, and we can simply change the operating conditions by changing one value in the common script. So after I've launched a simulation, I can duplicate my scene, change the RPM for my next simulation, and I do not need to rebuild the entire simulation from scratch. I hope you have found this demonstration useful. For more information about ParticleWorks and its capabilities, please visit www.particleworks.co.uk or contact us for a demonstration. Thank you.